Okay, uh, before I end this chapter, perhaps uh, we could just maybe just take a look at one or two of our geometric progression. Um, I don't know why I didn't come up too much on the AMC, but um, you know, I just uh, saw one about tossing dice about probability, and you know, it's really nice that we can link a geometric progression inside. Okay, let's just see what I mean. You can go read the question on the, on the page in front of you. Okay, it involves three people throwing a dice. Okay, and um, let's see, Alice takes turns, Alice, Bob takes turns to toss a pair of dice, Alice followed by Bob, followed by Carol, and find the probability that Carol will be first to toss the six. Okay, so we've got Alice, followed by Bob, and then Carol. Okay, I don't know what game they're playing, but it sounds like a game of just tossing dice and make sure you get a six. Okay, simple uh, probability tells us that if we roll a, a fair uh, sided dice, you get six, prob probability of a six is one over six, probability for not a six is five over six. Okay, that should be too easy. Be too easy. So, we want to find the probab probability that Carol gets uh, a six first, right? Now, in order for her to get a six, Alice and Bob needs to throw a non-six, right? So, if, if Carol gets a six on the first go, it'll be five over six, um, five over six, and 1 over 6. Well, what's the probability? It's going to be 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 1 over 6, which is equal to 5 over 6 squared 1 over 6. Shouldn't be a problem, okay? Now, the second time, okay, it's going to be 5 over 6, 5 over 6. Carol won't get a 6. She will get a, a 5 over 6 too. I mean, she'll get a non-6. Probability of that happening is 5 over 6, followed by Alice and Bob again, which is going to be 5 over 6, 5 over 6, because they need to get a non-6. So, uh, if Carol were to get a 6 on the second time, the probability, I mean, sorry, she'll get a 6 on the second time she throws it, the probability will be 5 over 6, 5 over 6, okay? Now, Carol will have to miss, she'll get a non-6, followed by Alice and Bob, which would also get a non-6. 1 over 6. Okay, which is equal to 5 over 6, um, uh, 5 times, times 1 over 6. Now, I could immediately see, which you probably already have, that if Carol were to get um, a 6 on the third try, that she throws it, right, it has to be followed by another 3 rounds of non-6. Okay, why? Because Carol will miss, Alice would miss, Bob would miss, and Carol will get it. Okay, so... By that principle, if Carol were to get a 6 on the third time, it would be 5 over 6. Um, 5 plus 8 would be 8, 1 over 6. Much like how 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, so so on and so forth. Now, the question is a bit interesting because it tells us what is the probability that Carol will get a 6. So, she might get a 6 on, uh, on the 6th time she throws it, a 6 or maybe the 20th time she throws it, you know, we don't know. So, but what we know, we know the probability for the first, second, third, and we can perhaps get the probability for the, the nth time, okay? Uh, but we want the total probability that Carol will get a 6, so in that sense, we're going to sum up this thing over here, correct? Um, this one, sum with this, sum with this, we're going to add it all up together. Because that would mean we're going to add up all the prob probabilities that Carol will get a 6. Okay? So, um, let's just write P, capital, would equal to 5 over 6 squared, 1 over 6, add up with 6, um, 5 over 6, 5, to the power of 5, times 1 over 6, add up with 5 over 6 uh, times 8, to the power of 1 over 6. Ellipsis, which I hope you got the term by now, up to infinity. Okay, now can we do that? Well, let's just take out the common factor. There's quite a lot of common factors here. Okay, now 5 over 6 is here. 5 over 6, I'm uh, sorry, 5 over 6 is here, but I'll do one better. It's 5 over 6 squared. Okay, so 5 over 6 squared is over here, 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 so and so on. So we can bring that out. 1 over 6 is also everywhere, and I mean in all the terms. So we can bring out 5 over 6 squared as well as 1 over 6. Oh, let's open a bracket, okay? Now it's gonna be um, 1 over here, right? 1 plus, we bring out the 1 over, one over 6, we bring out the 5 over 6 squared, we get 5 
over 6, 3. Likewise, 5 over 6, 3. Uh, 3 minus 2, 5 over 6, 6. 5 over 6 is about 6. Add up. So on and so forth. Okay? Now, let's just simply rewrite this to this, but we want to find this. Well, by now we can already see the geometric progression. It's over here. See? First term is 1. The, com the common ratio, now we're dealing with the common ratio, it's 5 over 6 to the power of 3. Be careful for that a bit. And that is true because the next one, you see, 5 over 6 to the power of 3 times 5 over 6 to the power of 3, 3 plus 3, we got 6, so that's correct. So basically, we just need to solve this one over here. Okay? And as we know, that we can sum it up to infinity. Why? Well, because the common ratio is less than 1. I hope you go through back to my introductory material. I will show you why is that the case. You know, 5 over 6 is less than 1. 5 over 6 to the power of 3 is also less than 1. Okay, so we will just write 5 over 6 squared. 1 over 6. Okay, uh, A, remember, if we sum to infinity, it will be A and 1 minus 5 over 6, 3. That, yeah, minus the common ratio, which is 3. Okay, now, that looks quite uh, difficult to solve, I mean, without a calculator. Now, if you can put a calculator there, um, you can already solve it, but um, let, let's just try, okay, let's just try to see whether we can solve it. Okay, now I'm going to write, um, the 3 is going to be inside here, so I'm going to write this in terms of that, right? Okay, um, which is equal to 5 over 6 squared, that is 1 over 6. Now, um, this one I'm going to go like this. Okay? The 1 is going to be on top. Okay? Now, I will put the 1 at 6 to the power of 3 over 6 to the power of 3. Okay? So that I can put it as a common denominator. And then the top is going to be 6, 3, take away 5 to the power of 3. Which, I'm not too sure whether are there any special indices not to solve that. Okay? So we will just have to do that uh, manually. Okay? If you want a better way, maybe you can let me know. Okay, but then by quickly solving this small part over here. 6 to the 3, take away 5 to the 3. 25 is 1 to 5, take away 36. Now 36 you can times by 6. Okay, 36, 6 will be 6, 3. Um, this will be you got 6, 3, 18, 21. Uh, 21, and you got a 6 here. Okay, okay, that is quite easy. 75. Um, Got 75 here, okay, you got 75, you got, you got 85, 85 got 91. Okay, then 91 goes at the top here, so you're gonna invert the two. Okay, now now I'll, I'll leave it as indices for now because you understand why later. You know, when we invert it, we can cross out certain uh, numbers because there's also 6 to the power of 2 and there's a 6 here, that's good. Okay, so this one we'll just go up here. 5. Now, okay, this is a part of the problem because um, your arithmetic may be good enough, but I'm just solving it, you know, for the, for the fun of it. Okay, uh, 91 will be here, but I'm going to invert it, so it'll be um, 91, 6 to the power of 3 is going to go on top, and 91 is going to go here. And that's the reason why we keep it as indices, because we can cancel this off, we can cancel this, and the 2 bring out here, we can cancel this also. So it's going to be 5 to the power of 2 over 91, which is equal to 25 over 91. And if I'm not wrong, I believe that is the answer. Okay, yeah, that's the answer. Okay, so here we go. It's just basically identifying the geometric progression inside the sum that we have. And it turns out to be over here, and we can sum to a problem uh, infinity, which is what we did, and uh, some algebra, except for this part here. You know, if, if you can tell me of a way to solve this question, I don't know, for example, 5 to the power of 3, take away 4 to the power of 3. Uh, well, I'm not too sure, maybe I can, you know, look more into that, but uh, I guess right now my level, I can't really solve that in a quicker way. Then we can go up to the power of 4, doesn't matter. Okay, so that class sums up the, the geometric progression aspect on how we will use it to solve the problem.